One of the most common tips people keep repeating in Salmon Run is to not get splatted, including me. But it can get somewhat frustrating if you don't know any direct ways to help you survive longer. Hey there everyone, it's Has here again and in this video I'll share one of the most important tips to Salmon Run that will help you survive longer and have a better chance at winning your shifts. And all it takes is 10 seconds at the beginning of every round. Before we get started though, I have a lot more guides and resources on how to improve at Salmon Run, so if you're interested in this topic, make sure to check out the rest of the channel and subscribe. So as I said, there is a very simple method that will greatly increase your odds at survival and overall performance in Salmon Run, and this is painting vital walls of the stage at the very beginning of your shifts. Now I know a lot of you will be skeptic about this, but painting walls is probably one of the most important aspects of Salmon Run that makes the difference between an average player and a higher ranking Salmon Run coworker, and not just because of painting the walls in itself, but also knowing how to use them. Before each wave there's 10 seconds where you can do anything before Salmonet starts spawning, and those 10 seconds are enough for the team to paint every single wall, and if everyone actually takes their time to do that, it's way faster and you won't even need those 10 seconds. Sadly, this is still something I don't see that often, and more often than not, it's a singular player who paints most of the walls and gives a higher chance of survival to the whole team, but still, it makes a huge difference and is in fact one of the ways you can help carry your team and reach higher ranks on your own and reduce the winning RNG. So which wall should you make sure to paint at the first 10 seconds of every wave? Let's take a look at every single stage and I'll show you all one by one. Gone Fish and Hydro Plant is probably the best to start with as it's arguably the easiest stage and it also doesn't have that many not so obvious walls to paint, but there's still a few that's crucial, especially on low tide. The most basic thing you can do right away is paint the inner surface of the stage walls that everyone constantly uses. This is also the main strength of the Hydro Plant that you just have access to all these elevated platforms you can climb onto and also shoot down on salmonids, so making sure you have free path to travel up and down on will is very important. Especially when you're trying to traverse fast from one side to another, it often happens that players slip or mess up the jump, and potentially fall in between the platforms. And having them painted will make this a non-issue as you can just continue to climb up instead of falling down, potentially into a pit of salmonids. Likewise, if you're already between the walls and you're getting surrounded, it's also that much easier to just climb up the sides, instead of further cornering you towards the basket area that might have even more salmonids. Another important wall to paint is on the side platform where we usually position for glowflies. By making sure this wall is painted, you give yourself a similar mobility like near the bridge, so you can safely jump between, even if you mess it up, but also climb up to either side when you find yourself trapped between them or you just fell down. These situations when you fall down might seem like super rare occasions, but I keep seeing them and even do them myself almost every day in a shift or two, and when they aren't painted it's a very memorable experience that sticks around, especially if you even lost the whole shift and 20 rank points because of it. Before we move on, we should also talk about Low Tide on Hydro Plant, as it's one of the rare maps where you actually want to make sure some of the walls are painted even on Low Tide. As I always say, going near the spawning shore on Low Tide Hydro Plant is one of the most dangerous areas to be in, and usually are a giant trap area. But sometimes you just gotta go there because of a stinger or a big shot that just spawned. Because of that, it's important to make sure you all paint the little walls on the sides of the platforms that we usually jump between. And I probably don't even have to mention this, but almost every single low tide hydro plan, there's at least one player who gets splatted in the water because the left side walls are not painted and they fail to jump back on the platform, as it's a fairly tricky jump. Next stage, everyone's favorite stage, Marooner's Bay. Fortunately, it also doesn't have a lot of walls to paint, but the ones we have are probably the most important ones of all the walls across the stages. On Marooners, the two walls you want to make sure are painted within the first 10 seconds are in fact the two elevators. Going to the shores is already very dangerous and most of the time should be avoided, but as a lot of players are not yet used to the stage, there's still a lot of activity down near the elevators, and among the huge chaos, it's not unusual that co-workers get left behind among a horde of salmonids and splat because there's no escape. That is why painting the elevators is crucial, so there's always an escape plan from the two shores, whether the elevator is up or down. Simply shoot the propellers of the elevator and jump down to all three sides to paint at least a single line and you pretty much secure the worst dangers that Marooner's Bay has in the freelance salmon run. Apart from the elevators, it's also worth painting the smaller walls in the middle parts of the ship, and also at the end. It's pretty rare that you have to use them, but it's better be safe than sorry. 
One of the trickier walls on the other hand that I recommend painting is right next to the basket, between the grates. It's a very small surface that's paintable, but is still somewhat of a trap I see a lot of players fall into. It's common that we mess up our jumps or just get thrown across the gap by a salmonid, and as a result, fall down below the bridges, which is one of the worst places to be in. Painting these small walls gives you a little bit of an extra surface you can cling to when jumping across and can make a big difference for when you need them for almost no effort. Next comes Sakai Station. Definitely the map with the most walls to paint and also the stage where it's possibly the most important thing to do it. The most obvious walls are of course all around the tower, like right under the grates which is usually the spot that players use to wall cling during Glowfly Rush Wave, but it's just a generally used route up the tower that's important. Less popular area that players forget to paint are the other sides of the tower that connects the basket and the shore. It's a pretty large area to paint and takes some time, but it gives so much mobility to the team that if you're a shooter, I would definitely make sure to paint as much as possible. If you don't have a lot of time, the most important parts to paint are the leftmost side near the grates, at the corner and also these small walls on the ramp that leads away back to the basket from the shore, as this little corner is a place I find a lot of co-workers get stuck in without ink and unpainted walls. But going back to the tower walls, they are pretty important to paint so that you can more reliably carry shore eggs back towards the basket instead of having to go around, and I find this route very crowded that gets used almost every game, so I would definitely make sure it's painted every shift. There's another spot on Sakai Station that I find extremely important, especially for high tide, and it is the double platform on the left side of the stage, that acts like a small peninsula during high tide. Make sure the sides are always painted, as they can act as a jumping spot between the two platforms that otherwise you can't really jump over, or is an extremely hard jump to make, and gets co-workers splatted when they try to go for a sting or some golden eggs laying around there. Once again, it's a very simple thing to paint, but gives you another escape route that you can use during high tide, which is arguably the worst part of Sakai Station. Finally, we get to spawning grounds. This map also has a lot of paintable walls, though a lot of them aren't really needed, but there's one that I almost never see anyone use, yet it's probably one of the most valuable ones. First, we all usually paint the walls around the basket, right? It's pretty straightforward, they help a lot jumping between the platforms, and also the long wall under the basket is a great escape tool from hordes, both below or above, and is a decent wall cling position during Glowfly Rush Wave if needed. Especially during high tide, it's crucial to paint the two walls between the basket and the opposite platform side, so that you can jump between them to kite salmon at hordes very effectively. The walls that I don't think are that important or get much use are probably the pillars. They're still there for mobility, but I don't think most players are ever under them to begin with, so they are somewhat niche. Instead, another high tide position I can't recommend enough to paint is the island on the other side of the basket. There's usually something spawning here, like a flyfish, and at the same time it's really easy to get stuck on, having only the left side jump as an escape route back to the basket. If you don't have the walls painted here, you will more often than not jump into the water, so again, by painting the walls, you will give yourself a secure spot to jump back to the basket and be safe. To give yourself some mobility for shore runs, I also recommend painting the shore walls. It's not too big of a deal, but still can be the difference between getting splatted or barely escaping thanks to them. Now the trickiest wall and probably the coolest that I almost never see anyone use is at the middle shoreline with the triple path section. You can in fact paint the long walls on the sides that lead up to the large platform opposite of the basket, and this is possibly one of the coolest and most useful escape routes on normal tight spawning grounds that I see absolutely no one use in games. It allows you to collect shore eggs a lot safer, while also kiting salmonids away, and also give you a safe path to splat big shots or stingers on that shore, while allowing you to quickly escape on this wall straight after. I'm not sure honestly why this isn't used that much, I really just believe most don't know about it, so spread the word and start using it as an additional mobility on spawning grounds. And with that said, those are the most important walls you should be painting on all stages in the first 10 seconds of every wave in Salmon Run. Once you start doing this, you'll slowly see the huge benefits they give the whole team, reduce those random splats and failed shifts, and overall give you a better win ratio for Salmon Run. 
As I said at the start, I understand that some of you might be skeptic, but try it out. It's really going to be very obvious how much they help, as you don't have the ink to paint walls during waves when there's just a bunch of salmonids chasing you. I believe I covered most of the important walls, but as usual, if you have any more tips or ideas for painting walls, make sure to share it in the comment section with everyone else. With that said, thank you for joining everyone. I hope this little guide will be useful in your salmon run journey, and remember to check out the rest of the channel for additional tips too. Take care all of you, and I'll see you in the next time.